www.dbtpioneer.com, your number one resource for getting started in the personal training industry, as well as becoming a successful uh, personal trainer once you're already there. So today we're actually going to be talking about how to become a, uh, a successful personal trainer in this video. And I have a longer article on this topic as well as an article on how to become a good personal trainer. Uh, the differences are the good personal training uh, article, I talk about how to be an effective and safe personal trainer that gets very good results. So how to become a successful personal trainer is more about the financial and business aspects of it. Uh, so let's dive right into it. So um, one of the biggest things that you need to do is you need to build a brand for yourself. So obviously it doesn't really matter if you're working in a commercial gym or a private studio or you're working for yourself, you still need to build, build a brand. So if you're working in a commercial situation, obviously you don't own you know, the company if you're working for 24 hour fitness, let's say. But um, in that situation, you are your brand. So your name as a trainer, uh, you are your own brand. So what you should be doing is you should be making business cards is one of the coolest things. I think you can get like a thousand business cards online from a bunch of different sites that look really cool for maybe like 15 or $20 total. Um, and so what your business card should have on them, the biggest thing at the top should be your name. So personal trainer, you know, Tyler Reed in my, in my case. Um, and then under that, uh, your maybe certifications and all the specialized uh, training that you do, whether you work with athletes or you work with people trying to lose weight or bodybuilders or whatnot. Uh, explain the type of training that you do and maybe a quick sentence on um, a philosophy or motivational quote or something like that. Um, <clears throat> if you're working uh, for a per, uh, your own studio, on the other hand, what you should do is you should have business cards at the same time, but you should have, um, but you should have your studio's name as your brand, obviously. And under that, the type of training that you specialize in, uh, and maybe once again a motivational quote. Um, Another thing that's very important nowadays for building a brand is uh, your internet presence. So social media profiles are a must, even if they're just for you as your brand name or if they're for your studio's name. Um, either way, you should have you know Google+, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, maybe Pinterest. And if you, if you can, uh, if you have the ability to make a website because it makes you look a lot more professional, and I'm not talking about like a blogspot.com slash your name or your fitness company. I'm talking about your own domain name on your own hosting. It's not that hard to do. Uh, I, I built my website PT Pioneer using like Bluehost and uh, WordPress, which is a free content management system. Uh, it's, it's incredible and you can do a lot of things without having to code. So check out wordpress.org or wordpress.com uh, after this video as well. It should be helpful for you guys. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the next thing besides building a brand, obviously, uh, is expanding your knowledge as a trainer or specialized in one area or another. Um, just like the medical profession, special, specialized uh, doctors, they cost more money than general uh, practitioners do. Just because if somebody's trying to reach peak performance, say as an athlete, they're going to pay a lot more money for a trainer that is specialized in working with clients that are athletes and trying to re reach peak performance. Um, you could, if you specialize, if you take advanced certifications and you gain a really wide uh, knowledge in the personal training industry, you could have more skills to promote uh, in your business and uh, people will come to you as the expert in these, in these uh, areas, say corrective exercise or weight loss or bodybuilding or, or uh, performance training. Um, the more specializations you have, the more value you're worth to clients, the more money you can make overall. <clears throat> uh, the last topic, I touched upon it a little bit before, is working for yourself. So, if you're working at a commercial gym right now, there are, you know, obviously, it's a good way to get your foot in the door as a, a personal trainer that's just starting out, but you make a lot less money than you would working for yourself. So at a commercial gym, you have the gym taking about a third of what the client pays, the salesperson taking about a third of what the client pays, and you get the remaining one third, which is maybe $20 an hour out of the $60 that your client's paying for your time for, that, for the hour session. Um, <clears throat> if you're working for yourself, on the other hand, 
you could be charging $60 for a one-on-one -on -one training session for an hour and make 100% commission. There are some upfront costs, of course, uh, including if you need space to train, um, you might have to rent out a studio, which might be like $1,000 a month, depending on where you live. Or you could work out in your own home, you could work out in your client's home, or if the weather permits it, you could work out outside with your clients. So, not only you know, can you can you make uh, the whole amount of money that your clients are paying, but um, it's it's a lot more fun being your own boss. You can set your own schedule, and uh, all the profits are yours as well. And, and it's your business; it's something that you own, which is super cool. Um, I really like that. So, other upfront costs that you might need are <clears throat> personal training insurance. Uh, you need that because if you're at a commercial gym, they usually have personal training insurance for you. But if you're working for yourself, you're going to need to cover yourself. So it's about $150 a year, which is not that expensive. You'll also need to pay for equipment, depending on what type of clients you have. Uh, the equipment's gonna vary. If you have, if you need squat racks and Olympic weights, that's a lot more expensive than working with elderly people that are trying to focus on a stamina and balance and stuff like that <coughs> uh, significantly. But you can still make a significant amount of money more working for yourself, especially if you do something like small group training. So. If you get five people and say, oh, it's just 20 or $25 a person instead of the standard 60 for a one-on-one -on -one session, they get to save money and you can make $100 to you know, $200 for an hour if you fill up your clients, uh, if you fill up your schedule with these group training sessions that people are paying $20 per session for, then you're, you're in the money, you're making a lot of money and <clears throat> you've now become a very, very successful personal trainer. So here, those were some quick tips I had for you guys on how to become a su successful personal trainer. I hope you liked it. Check out my website, PT Pioneer, down below uh, for a lot of other personal training information on how to sell personal training, how to make more money, how to be a better personal trainer, as well as how to, if you're not yet, uh, have an advanced certification like the PESC, as I have a lot of reviews and certification comparisons that you guys should check out. But please give me a thumbs up if this article video was helpful. Thank you. For study guides and discount codes on some of the top personal training certifications, head to ptpioneer.com. The link will be in the description down below. I have a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a personal trainer, how to make a lot of money once you are a personal trainer, and much more essential information on getting started as a personal trainer for you guys to check out. Until next time, guys, happy training.